joined, as always, by the star of our show, Homer Smith, the private wealth advisor with uh, Convergent Wealth Partners. And Homer, it's great to be back with you. Looking forward to diving into another complex financial topic with you today. Yeah, glad to be back as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, starting off uh, episode number two here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, no, it's good to be back. Yes, uh, for our, our viewers and our listeners, we, this is the second episode in our, our show, Advance Your Wealth. Again, you know, what we're trying to accomplish with this show is like I said, diving into some of these complex financial topics that you know sometimes can get bogged down by jargon or, or literacy that just flows right over our heads sometimes, and that's gr- that's great and all, but we have the experts to help us there. And Homer's one of those guys. He's going to be able to hash out some of these questions that are nagging at you, and maybe think you know you're thinking that you want to apply to your estate. So we've got a great topic for you today, and we're excited to dive into it. Today's topic: the five big mistakes that affluent homeowners are making. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh, wait, I might fall into that category, tune in. This this is a big one for you. And Homer, you and I can kind of dive right into it and kick things off. You know, mistakes that homeowners can make. Obviously, there's a laundry list of these things when it comes to any part of your home. Uh, but really, I think what we're going to be diving into today is the, the kind of the overall concept of liability and where you can be exposed uh, being a homeowner yourself. So very first uh, thing to kind of kick it off for us today is let's kind of start by talking about why it makes sense for homeowners to do a financial checkup of sorts uh, on all of their homes. Maybe it's just one. Maybe they have a vacation home. Maybe they have multiple. Like, for example, they want to examine their insurance coverage, what that covers, uh, and so that way they can address any issues or problems before they come. So why is this so important to kind of take a look uh, and give a financial checkup of, on your homes specifically? Yeah, yeah great question. And, and I think it's why it has become so important is home and auto insurance or liability insurance is, is one of those things that's very easy just to kind of set it and forget it. Mm-hmm. And you know, put it in place once and then rarely do any sort of in-depth review um, of those policies, even as your life changes. And so it's really important for homeowners to do one of these regular checkups uh, on their overall insurance coverage, just to make sure they're not underinsured. And you know, for many of our clients, you know, their, their primary residence may not be their biggest asset when it comes to their overall net worth, uh, but it still is, you know, an important component of, of the bigger picture. And so it is important that they review and identify if there are any gaps that could ultimately have a major impact on their family wealth. And I mean, the last thing you want is to think that your system and your coverage is buttoned up only to have this one very peculiar thing happen to you and your family and all of a sudden, that is the arrow to the heart. And, it, and uh, you know, Homer, you and I were chatting just before we went live here, and it always seems like it's the, uh, it's the people that have money, that have wealth, the affluent homeowners that have the targets on their back. It's not the people that get into a car crash that don't really have an estate, don't have much to their name. It's those that have wealth that are going to have that target on their back. So moving into the really the title and, and the theme of our, our show today, the five big mistakes, let's talk about these. What are those five most prevalent and significant mistakes that you see affluent families making? Yeah, the five most uh, prevalent and, and really impactful mistakes that, that, that have the biggest risk them that we see being made, uh, first and foremost, is just not having enough liability protection in place overall. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know we're going to talk a lot more about that one. Um, the next one is, is if they have multiple homes um, and, and many uh, types of different vehicles and assets spread out, it's not having cohesive coverage across their entire um, asset structure. Uh, the third one is Oftentimes, for planning purposes, people put their homes or properties or assets inside of LLCs, limited liability companies, or trusts, and then they fail to attach their insurance policies to those vehicles, um, to those uh, the trusts and the LLCs, which then limits their ability to have uh, coverage on those. Hmm. Um, another one is, especially with higher-end homes, there's really unique features, unique architecture, or really unique building materials that are used. And again, the, in a traditional home insurance policy, the, the, the value associated with those aren't, aren't going to be typically covered well. And that's, then finally... Yeah, that's an interesting one. Sorry, I yeah. don't want to cut you off. That's a really peculiar one in and of itself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one that's going to be missed almost every time. And then, and then finally, oftentimes you're going to have um, other valuable assets associated with your home, whether it's a, uh, a piece of fine art or an art collection or uh, antiques that may have been passed down through the family. Um, and uh, those typically aren't individually covered, and they're just covered under the personal property protection of a homeowner's insurance policy. And that's not going to be adequate in most cases, to provide the protection that's needed. And Homer... I'm you there? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. Sorry about that. 
And as, as we kind of move into our next question, we're looking at these different pieces of, of um, you know, liability and coverage, and we want to focus on these elements. Like, could you talk about a mistake? You know, you mentioned, you know, not having enough liability insurance. What are the most concerning issues specifically when it comes to liability insurance? You know, what what is it that you kind of fear when you're looking at some of your clients? And you're thinking, oh, uh, you might need a little more coverage here. Can you talk a little bit about maybe an example that you have of this or, or really why that is such a big mistake in the first place? Yeah, and, and, and just to be honest too, as a financial advisor uh, through my history in this career, you know, home and auto insurance, liability insurance wasn't an area that we typically focused a lot on. Um, but recently in the last you know five years, as we've identified how big of an issue uh, liability protection in particular is, it is becoming obvious that that liability coverage is the number one issue uh, that we identify. The number one mistake people are making is not having enough liability insurance. And so to give you an example, um, let's say a client of ours has a net worth of $10 million and, and they did some planning. They added a million dollars of liability coverage through an umbrella policy. But in, in looking at their overall picture, we identified that of their assets, if something were to happen, if they were to end up in a liability situation, six and a half million of their 10 million could be subject or could be attached to a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And so even with that million dollars of liability coverage, five and a half million of their net worth would still be at risk and would be un, uh, un, unprotected uh, from that lawsuit. So that, that's the biggest issue that we're seeing now uh, in, in doing our reviews. Again, you know, it comes back to you think you're covered and you might not be. So it really comes down to the end of the day of, of circling back, looking at your coverage in depth to make sure there aren't any gaps in those, you know, in that foundation. And so when you look at coverage, Homer, uh, and I know uh, this is something that you guys work very closely with your, your clients at Convergent, when you're looking at specific coverage or, or rather adequate coverage, you know, that mediocre coverage that might have those gaps in the foundation, what are some signs that pop out to you that say, oh, wait, we might need to address this here? Yeah, that, that first sign is I think everybody should do um, the example that I just gave is look at your overall total net worth, that's your assets minus your liabilities, and then identify of that how much would be subject to a lawsuit um, if a liability occurred, if a car accident happened, if an injury at your home happened. And that is the starting point for how much liability protection that you should be considering. Mm -hmm. um, another sign is, you know, we mentioned some valuable assets that might be attached to your home, whether it's through art collections or, or different things of that nature, is just looking into your homeowner's insurance policy and seeing do those valuable assets have their own policy or are they just kind of lumped in underneath your property, your personal property protection, or mm -hmm. not even individually mentioned at all. So those are some of the initial signs I think that would be easy to identify if there might be some issues there. So coverage obviously being a very pertinent topic here in our conversation today, but I also want to shift gears and talk about those, you know, that are going to need even more coverage because they have more homes. You know, you find an affluent family, sure, they've got home base, uh, you know, where they raised the family. And then as their wealth grew throughout the years, maybe a vacation home was purchased. Maybe a home was purchased for the kids or, uh, or for a job because you're flying so often to a particular location that you buy property in that location. So let's shift gears a little. and Let's talk about those people that have multiple homes. What are some of the big insurance related pitfalls to avoid in this, uh, in this realm? Home. Yeah, when, when it comes to multiple homes, the biggest issues we, we find are if those homes are owned in multiple states. And often that means your local insurance agent may not have been able to do the same insurance uh, on both of the, the same type of insurance on both of those homes, the same carrier, same type of coverage, same provisions. And so you just end up not having cohesive coverage mm -hmm. across all of your policies. And so ideally you have one carrier that can do the same cohesive coverage across the board. Um, the other issue that we see is that because it ends up in a different state and oftentimes becomes under a different carrier, even if you have significant liability protection, maybe you have a $10 million umbrella policy or a $15 million umbrella policy, if you didn't specifically add that second home or third home in another state underneath that protection, it's not going to be covered in a liability situation. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, it's one of those mistakes that you can easily avoid by just sitting down and having the right conversation at the right time with the right individual. It's those three factors. But another mistake that you have mentioned along the way here, uh, Homer, is is failing to list those trusts or those LLCs, you know, on your homeowner's insurance policy. So why specifically is that a, a potentially risky mistake and what could it mean to those homeowners? 
And it's it's important because you know a lot of our clients for planning purposes will put their properties, uh, put their homes inside of these trusts and LLCs, mm -hmm. and it's a great planning technique. The challenge becomes if you then fail to redo your insurance and attach those LLCs or those uh, trusts to your liability and homeowners insurance protection, so that if you know something were to happen at that property, uh, uh, you know it's being worked on doing remodeling and somebody got injured on your property, if it's not covered. Uh, it's not directly named under your insurance coverage, it's not going to be protected. And mm -hmm. so that's a critical piece to, you know, you did one big step of planning to do all that estate planning work. You then got to go back and, and add it to your insurance coverage. Again, another example of filling in those cracks in the foundation of the policy, because at the end of the day, we work so hard to build up our wealth and our estate. And, you know, I think the the thought in the back of any affluent family that has that wealth or that established estate is is preservation, how to preserve your legacy and to pass that on to future generations. And if you're not sitting down to have some of these conversations, that legacy could go up in smoke uh, if the wrong circumstance comes by. And that's what today's episode really is about, is making sure that we fill those cracks in the foundations, get you thinking about some of those ways to avoid having those dreams and that legacy going up in smoke. So moving on here, uh, Homer, to our next question, you know, you note that an issue of some of the affluent homeowners that you see, uh, they might need to address their homes like unique construction or architecture. You had mentioned that off the top. Could you elaborate a little bit more? I'm guessing that specifically you're thinking of kind of the materials that go into the process of, of your building your home, maybe some of the um, amenities that you've built along the way, like a pool renovation or a pool house or something like that. Am I right? Yeah, it's really it's really all about the distinctive architecture or okay. the really unique building materials that you might have used in the home, and, and um, especially in you know high value homes where where there's a lot of unique uh, architecture that goes into those. And so you really sometimes also see it uh, in the north in the northeast or east coast where the homes are much older, um, construction has changed, so those unique features um, really aren't going to be accounted for. But also it's in a lot of the materials that are rare that that might be brought into a home. And so if you've brought in marble or a from specific material from outside the country, and it's a very unique feature within your home, a traditional homeowner's insurance policy is not going to uh, account for that level of a value, particular to that one uh, piece of material within your home, and especially not to that unique architecture. And so you're likely not just going to have uh, the level of uh, protection on your homeowner's insurance policy to cover the replacement value if you know, worst case scenario happened, you had to uh, utilize your insurance to replace replace your home or replace that particular feature to your home. Right, right. And and you find that these affluent families typically enjoy a custom built home uh, in a in a place that they're proud of. And, and this this is one of those topics that really falls under a lot of the people that we're trying to address today is. So, yes, maybe take a second look back at, you know, what kind of materials were used to build your home, those amenities that you may have tacked on. Uh, these are things that can be assessed and should be included within your insurance policy you know, if an issue were to happen, uh, yeah, finally, we have a, we have yeah, a, sorry, Hammer, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, we have no. a friend that has a, it's a, a very unique fireplace, you know, it was mm -hmm. something that they had, um, brought in from outside. It was constructed and brought in from outside the country. Oh, wow. Um, and that piece, that one piece of their home is kind of the centerpiece of their home and probably the most valuable, uh, asset inside of their home itself. Uh, and again, I'm, if that's not specifically addressed, um, with their insurance, you know, if something were to happen to that particular piece, it'd be it'd be a, a very difficult to replace. I can only imagine, and and a headache yeah. and a half <laughs> with that. Yeah. Uh, so finally, Honor, let, let's talk about you know we talked about the the architecture. I think everybody's head naturally moves towards the stuff. I mean, people have collections of jewelry, cars, even horses for that matter. What's what are some of the mistakes that you're seeing that affluent families are making when it comes to these insurance policies when it comes to their stuff, which obviously yeah. has value to it. Yeah, it's uh, the the biggest mistake people make is not individually uh, insuring those valuable assets, uh, mm -hmm. and and again, just counting on their overall home homeowners insurance policy to protect them with that. And and the reality is, a lot of those pieces, whether it be an art collection or antiques that have been passed down through the family or some extremely rare valuable cars, 
they're likely going up in value uh, much faster than the value of the home might be. And it's just not going to be uh, the, the insurance that you have in place is not likely going to keep up with the value of those. So, for instance, with art, if something were to happen to a valuable piece of art that was damaged and you've owned it for you know, 30, 40 years, uh, your personal uh, property protection inside of your homeowner's insurance, just even that what, whatever you have designed for that is not going to cover just even that one piece of art that you may have. And so it's really important that each of those valuable assets are uh, have their own individual policy coverage separate from the base homeowner's insurance policy or as riders on, but individually mm-hmm. named individual coverage. And and folks, this is not the uh, protection plan that Best Buy might offer you when you're buying yeah. a new laptop. This is an insurance policy. This is going to be a concrete foundational piece of documentation that is going to protect your assets. And it's it's a conversation worth having. Uh, and it's one that's certainly uh, you know worth looking into. So Homer, We've talked about all these different assets, all the different ways that, um, you know, you could be liable, you could face, you know, uh, financial repercussions of not insuring certain facets of whether it's your home, your your assets as a whole. Uh, what are some of the next? I mean, we, we've certainly scared our listeners and our viewers today. So what are some of those next steps that they should be taking, given all of these risks that we've discussed today? Yeah, and to be honest, it's 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 very easy to be underinsured when it comes to your home or these valuable assets because the likelihood of needing to utilize the insurance is really low. Mm-hmm. So it's it's super easy just to put this stuff on the back burner and not think about it very often. But just like with your home, you need to make regular repairs, whether it be the gutters or the roof. Uh, it's important to look at your your homeowner's insurance and your overall liability insurance and address if there's repairs that are needed to be made there and whether you should be working with your trusted advisor to review that and, and make some updates. Sure, sure. And, and Homer, I'm sure there are a few people that are, are tuning in right now that are thinking, wait a second, this is Advance Your Wealth with Homer Smith. We're talking to a private wealth advisor, not an insurance specialist. So what can a private wealth advisor do to help honer, homeowners uh, see if they need any changes or bolstering to their home insurance? You know, where do you come into play in all this, given that you are not an insurance policy advisor? Yeah, so, so part of advancing your wealth also is protecting it and making sure that you don't move backwards uh, when it comes to that. And so uh, the whole idea of stress testing is really that ability for you to identify if there are gaps uh, within your insurance coverage so that you can address the most important pieces for you that make sense. And so you know this whole concept of stress testing has been used by the wealthiest from around the, the globe for years, but it isn't limited to the top 1%. You know, everybody listening to this today has the ability to review your home and auto and property and casualty insurance insurance, uh, have it reviewed by an expert who's going to really address your needs, your goals, your concerns uh, specific to you. And the beauty of this process is it's something that you can oversee on your own. You don't need to work uh, with, a, with a professional, but uh, you also have the ability to have your uh, trusted professional help you through that process, navigate through it. And at the end of the day, you're really going to end up with a couple main uh, endpoints here. Number one is you're going to have a lot more clarity on your overall insurance picture. Uh, But most importantly, you're going to have avoided the five big mistakes that we talked about today and ultimately have a much better chance of protecting the family wealth. So you you heard it here, folks, sitting down with Homer and his team, they're going to be able to help you. They're going to be able to identify some of those cracks in the foundation, offer some suggestions on how you can repair them. And then, you know, mitigate any potential issues that might arise in the future. There's nothing stopping you from taking action today to ensure that that legacy, that estate, the wealth that you have worked so hard to build over the years stays within your family, stays within the people that matter to you most, and goes on, uh, you know, for generations to come. So, again, Homer, uh, it's been a pleasure chatting with you about some of these five big mistakes. And we want to obviously keep our, you know, our audience educated as we move through these, these future episodes where we identify all these complex topics. So it's great to have you aboard and thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Ryan.